Welcome YouTube to the review of the $8 final table or let's see, I don't want to spot anything but a couple of you guys have uh, seen what has happened um, so we're 6 out of 16 here with 3 betting A6 suit against Button um, Button seems to open pretty wide and um, yeah, it's an easy 3 bet um, we should size it in a way that they have to commit their chips uh, it's not really likely they will 4 bet fold in that spot we're opening a 6 suit at the next hand and we're getting flat called by a guy who has only 6 big blinds. Um, obviously not a really good choice, he could have just shoved free. Um, as we're just getting it in on most flops anyway. Uh, here, yeah, we just have 2 thirds of the pot left, we're putting him all in and he seems to have king-queen. Um, yeah, fortunately we hold and we go to 2.8 million chips. All right, uh, SP Jordy opens again from the bottom and he seems to be auto opening like 80 to 100% of his range. So we're just three betting pretty wide. We're also sizing it to 335 again, so that a four bet would most likely put him all in. And, um, you know, if you make it 240, we could, he could possibly click it to 2380 and that's not so nice for us. So here we leverage his four bet. Okay, uh, in this uh, case, a Rege, Rege Vapur uh, opens from UTG and uh, we have a good hand, so we're three betting against him and we're three bet calling, even though he's a tight player, but we're not full ring anymore, so that's that's uh, completely okay. We're also sizing it in a way he knows we're not folding anymore, so maybe that makes him fold a little bit more. If he has a pock pair like sevens, I don't think he's getting it in here. So that's a good outcome for us if we fold out sevens and eights, probably not nines, but it happens because we're on the uh, final table bubble. We open pocket queens in early position. And I remember the sand because a lot of flat colors were out there. Trying to outflop me. I think everyone besides the short stack are in there. King crushed flats here. And then the blinds come along as well. We flop uh, check eight deuce rainbow and we're gonna put out a C bet here. Uh, while not really knowing what we'll do when we get raised, we have to see like which position raises and we're probably bet calling against uh, at least the short stack, obviously. But against 1.7 million, it's like, I'm not sure whether they are gonna race without having it here. And that uh, they're most likely sad mining here. So, they might fight. I mean, the texture, they might have face check as well. So, it's not like a lot of merit in bed folding. Um, still 3 out of 10 as you can see on the bottom left, we're hand for hand. And uh, it's pretty great because we got already the biggest stack at this table. Um, with 4 million chips we can put a lot of pressure on all these other guys because they want a final table bubble while there's still short stacks around. And we're bringing up the other table where some guy just won a big pot. Okay, so we have a seven suited. We're opening here from middle. Ah, oh, it's this is a hijack actually, and uh, into four people. I guess we are still gonna have to fold to the big blind. I know everyone calls. And it's, what, it's the first time on the final table, and uh, it's pretty interesting. We're actually deciding here to fire one seventh of the pot, that's about 14%, to just get everyone a little bit confused. 
betting like 90 something K. That's even less, that's maybe 12% of the pot. And you know, it can sometimes pick up some weird timing, you know, they, they, they don't expect this to happen. Uh, the good thing about this hand is we are betting our backdoor equity basically that we have here. Uh, on the turn we don't pick up that backdoor equity, we could either pick up an ace of seven or some clubs. They will my, my, very likely continue on. Um, I don't expect their ranges to be particularly strong in this spot. SP Jordy overcalls here against, but it's just against a, such a small bet that I don't think it's that dangerous yet. And uh, now he fires half a million. Um, looks really polarized in my opinion with that sizing. And uh, given that this was, was the best river, except for an ace that we could have hit and our, we don't block any busted draws that he might have had, such as like 10-9, Jack-9, we're gonna make the call here. And uh, we're pretty, pretty surprised that he showed pocket eights in that spot. Because we would have expected him to try to get stacks in and not do that. We snap base 9 against a small bunch of and we lose against this one, yeah. So we go back to 2 million. Pretty important hand, but you know, can't always make it. And then we're four handed and we find a reshoving hand in a small blind with ace king. We don't get called. Next hand, same situation, button opens pretty wide because it's a cheap little with 50 million chips. We're reshoving queen jack off. For like 17, 18 bigs. And we don't get called. Uh, same situation, he opens from the small blind. We have again 17 bigs or something like that. We reshove his 4 offsuit. He folds. We have ace 9. We're opening from the height, from the cutoff, four handed. And uh, he will defend. On this board, I think like um, middle pair top kicker is a good bet or a good check back. We could go either way. We're betting somewhat small. Um, to get some value by his uh, 9x, 6x, by some of his gut shots. Uh, on the turn we could go either way, we could check back or bet. I go for pretty large sizing because there's a lot of protection I think that we need from over cards um, and uh, some combination of flush draws, gut shots and whatever. And we're sizing up a river shove on any 9 or ace. Um, so I think even if a 10 comes on the river, it's likely that we're going to bet again, maybe not shoving. And we're just going to get it to showdown because he has some 10x calling us on the turn for sure. But it's still short handed and I don't have to be so worried about that. We're checking back the king for offsuit here against a small one limp. He started limping a little bit more. Um, he was raised with a 50 million chips. We call against a stab in the top pair. And on the ace turn, we're probably not having it as often because we didn't raise it before the flop. And he pro might have not have so many ace-x combos either because he didn't raise it before the flop. But he started limping more so he might have limped the trap. On the river he chooses a pretty unconventional size. Uh, he goes for a pretty large bet because we capped ourselves on a turn. And he wanted to scare us most of the time here. And he needs an ace or a strong king to value bet here. He doesn't bet a 7 that way. He doesn't bet queens or jacks or something like that that way. Um, and I think he's likely gonna bluff here, so we're calling being... We had to be good here at one and three times. He raises again, and this time we're not having to shove anymore, but we have many more big blinds. We're actually three betting our pocket jacks here. And he decides to put in a four bet to... That is very small. So in in game, I thought that he he will fold sometimes to the five bet. Um, choosing a 1.2 million size because we have like 4.6 so that's only a, qu a quarter of our 5 bet shove and he's definitely gonna fold some uh, with his 4 bet size if he made it like 1.6 you know he's almost committing himself with any ace x and here obviously we're 3 by 5 betting anyway because we have a monster 3 handed but yeah I when you talk fold equity you know he could shove like a hand like ace 8 suited here because you still think that he, he will fold a lot of the times. 
So it should shove a little bit wider there, having that read. And we're not shoving here directly against SP Jordi with 20 blinds. We're going to go for the 3-bet again. And it seems that SP Jordi had enough of that 3-betting stuff. So he shoves for the shoves queen and suited and runs into our hand. Pretty nice outcome. And we go to 10 million. Now we're almost at Ilfri's stack, stack size here, 300, which is awesome. We're flopping pretty decent with an open ender. We don't want to get check raised here though. Um, so we, we check it back because we can continue on most turns anyway. And you saw us a larger stack, so it's, it's, it would be a little bit awkward. Now that you check twice, you know, he has a range cap and we can bet with a variety of hands, not only the nuts, of course, but we're betting a rather large because we still will have the nuts somewhat often um, or something near that and he won't. Pocket six is on the button. We get three bet. We could certainly four bet jam here in a three handed game. I, that's not out of the question, but I think against Gannibal, who was a little bit tired at that point, it wasn't the best spot to do so, and it would be risking a little bit too much in this situation. Okay, pretty weird spot. We get three bet squeezed by the cheap leader. He has a little bit more chips than us, and uh, I think there's no other option this time than to call. I certainly don't want four bet fold. I don't want a four bet call. Um, and I don't want to just rip it, because then I would just be getting called by better hands for 50 big blinds, which is an insane amount in this spot. It's not like just 20 big blinds, which I would always shove here. Okay, we're going post flop and on king a3 rainbow. He decides to check, which is pretty awkward. So um, our range here has a lot of king x combos. So that's why I'm going to wrap the king here um, with the weaker part of my range. And that's kind of surprising to most players listening to this. But I'm not calling uh, opening and calling this three bet squeeze so wide. So this is one of the weaker ends I'm getting to the flop with anyway. And unless I have like 10 jack suited, queen jack suited, 10 nine suited and all those suited stuff. Um, so I'm betting to wrap a king and I have a lot of back to that I can follow up on. Like any spade, any 10, any jack and any queen and ace would also be good. So half the deck kind of hits me okay. I don't get half that deck. Um, we will see a blank on the turn and we are giving up with this part of our range. Um, as Trying to wrap the king on a, on a four doesn't make a lot of sense with a hand like ace queen. We're trying to get to showdown with our showdown value part of our hand, uh, which might improve on a queen or an ace. I think it's really likely has a hand like pocket jacks or pocket tens, and if we picked up equity on the turn, we might have gone him off the hand there, putting him in a bet of 2.4 million or something. We find king queen suited. And we're calling the reshuffle here by the small blind in a three-handed game. Seems pretty standard. Um, he might also have weaker kings, and all of his ace x combos are not that strong against our king queen suited. And uh, in this situation, we actually get a good deal by Ilfris. He um, he offers us a deal where we get two hundred dollars more, or like one hundred and fifty maybe. Um, instead of an ICM deal and I took that because I was 4 a.m. and was kind of fine with that All right. Thanks for listening watching. See you guys on Sunday for the scoop kickoff on the 8th of May